Understanding conditionals. Don't confuse the second with the third. Hello, English language learners. Welcome back to our ongoing series on mastering English grammar. Today, we're going to delve deeper into the realm of conditional sentences, focusing on the second conditional and the third conditional. We'll tackle a common issue that confuses many learners. Mixing up the second conditional with the third conditional. Let's start with a quick recap. Second conditional sentences are hypothetical situations in the present or future. They're not likely to happen, but it's still possible. They have two parts, an if clause in the simple past, and a main clause with would plus base form of the verb. Here's an example. If I had a million dollars, I would travel around the world. On the other hand, third conditional sentences refer to unreal past situations, things that did not happen in the past. They also have an if clause and a main clause, but the tenses are different. The if clause is in the past perfect, and the main clause has would have plus past participle. Here's an example. If I had had a million dollars, I would have traveled around the world. One of the most common mistakes when using the second and third conditionals is mixing the tenses from both types of conditionals in one sentence. For instance, many learners might say, if I had had a million dollars, I would travel around the world. But this is incorrect. The if clause suggests an unreal past situation, third conditional, but the main clause talks about a hypothetical present or future, second conditional. The key to avoiding this common mistake is paying close attention to the tense you're using in both parts of your sentence. If you're discussing a hypothetical present or future situation, stick with the second conditional. If I had a million dollars, I would travel around the world. And if you're referring to an unreal past, go with the third conditional. If I had had a million dollars, I would have traveled around the world. Keeping these tenses consistent within each sentence is critical for making sense and effectively communicating your thoughts in English. That's all for today, folks. We hope this video helped clear up some confusion about the second and third conditionals. Remember, English is a journey, not a race, so take your time to understand these concepts and practice them regularly. Understanding and correctly using the second and third conditional can greatly enhance your fluency and ability to express nuanced ideas in English. Until next time, keep practicing, and happy learning!